I'm sure most of you watching right now probably know a family member or a friend who's deeply embedded in conspiracy theory culture. Like when planes fly overhead and they claim they're spreading chemtrails, or they're dead set on proving that the Earth is indeed flat, even though literally every single ounce of evidence that exists on the surface of this planet proves otherwise. They're either fully convinced that these theories are indeed completely true and without any faults in reasoning or facts checking, or have fallen head first so quickly into this culture and community that they left the logic centers of their brains at the doorstep long ago. There is something to be said about how seductive conspiracy theories are and how quickly someone can fall down the rabbit hole from believing, like Alex Jones once famously said, that chemicals in the water are turning the frogs gay, to things that are more sinister and deeply harmful, such as vaccines causing autism, Pizzagate, climate change being a liberal hoax that will allow them to take over the world, and hydroxychloroquine being touted by Trump and countless conservative figureheads as a cure for COVID-19, even though the ingestion of it has already led to multiple deaths. The allure of these things as alternative truths is strong enough to pull any one of us into a cult-like mindset, and even lead us to our untimely death. That by itself should speak to how dangerous they are. The vast majority of the time, however, those who espouse these things aren't doing it in order to intentionally hurt other human beings, but they were propelled into it because of a mistrust of big pharma, government overreach, or the government in general, and scientists that was already present within them. And the seeds were ever so quietly sown that would exploit that mistrust. In my mind, conspiracy theories are inherently political things because they tend to look at any number of modern socio-political issues and paint them as a front for some grand manipulative scheme that's happening behind the scenes, as if there's some history-altering truth being kept secret that must be uncovered. Otherwise, um, liberals? I don't know. <laughs> Those who fall for them will have been reprogrammed to the point where they'll listen to the CDC, the government, and any sort of political and or scientific institution and immediately say, okay, but here's where you're wrong and where you're lying to us. Even though the very people making these statements very rarely have any substantial background in science, politics, or whatever it is they're claiming is a spook by those in power. We see you sending those anti-vaxxer articles to all your suburban middle-aged friends, Karen. Don't you and a good chunk of those in your circle also have kids? Kind of seems like there's a conflict of interest there, no? But there is very much a conflict of interest at play here. One between the people who are put into position where they're more easily duped, and those in power who are seeking some sort of material gain by doing so. That, my friends, is not a conspiracy theory, believe it or not. Funny, that sounds like something they would say. Hmm. Right now, we are witnessing a conspiracy theory that's much grander in scale than those mentioned before play out before our very eyes. One that's shaking American society to its very core and revealing the cracks in its foundation that may or may not push us to a collapse in the near future. That theory revolves around COVID-19 either being a Chinese bioweapon or some offshoot of the common flu, much like QAnon has been claiming for months now. And the idea that the government ordering people to wear masks signals the beginning of a communist takeover or something. Listen, I don't spend much time in these circles for good reason, and I don't know that I'll ever be able to wrap my head around it. COVID-19 is utterly ravaging this country and has been since the pandemic began to kick into high gear back in March. Nearly every other country around the world took decisive action almost immediately by ordering citizens to quarantine themselves, shutting down all workplaces, schools, and any place of gathering, giving their citizens whatever aid they need to weather the outbreak, and do everything in their power to hold their country together in the face of the deadliest outbreak we as a species have faced in nearly a century. They did what needed to be done because they understand that a healthy populace is a healthy society. Unfortunately, it seems those occupying the halls of our government either don't understand that or don't care, and I know which one I'm leaning towards. American society is in a state of decay because of the dying thrashes of late-stage capitalism and a fascistic police state that's desperately trying to maintain its hold on power before what remains dissolves through its fingertips. Our country is profoundly sick, and the institutions responsible for centuries of oppression, imperialism, death and destruction at home and abroad, and enriching themselves at the expense of the lives of people who did nothing wrong. The Trump administration failed to do jack shit to even put a buffer in front of the oncoming pandemic and used Twitter and countless press conferences and interviews to spread blatant misinformation about the actual nature of COVID, how it's affecting people, 
people and what sort of plans they have in place to prevent death on a mass scale and our economy grinding to a halt because the cash flow had all but stopped. All they had and still have are lies. 5 million cases and 162,000 deaths have been confirmed so far in the US. Our GDP has dropped by nearly 32.9% compared to a 15% drop during the Great Depression. We're witnessing an oncoming houselessness crisis, the likes of which our society has never seen. Businesses are shutting down left and right, leaving some cities looking barren and abandoned. And a vaccine, as far as we know, is still a year away or more. And Trump waves it away as if nothing is wrong, ridiculing the CDC and every scientific institution trying to get ahead of COVID in the process. It's because he and all of those in the bourgeois state will barely feel a sting from this pandemic. When you're insulated by an exorbitant amount of wealth and political power and only see the world through Benjamin colored glasses, you tend not to give a shit about the poor and powerless who are literally dying at your feet. He'd rather continue calling it a Chinese virus, stoking Cold War-like fears of the Chinese people, and passing legislation legislation that gives corporations and the military industrial complex trillions, but apparently universal health care is just too expensive. Interesting. They are callous, cruel, and so obviously do not have our best interests at heart. And yet, millions across the country have fallen under their spell and continue to defend the very institution that's killing them in the first place. People who in any other situation would be kind and level-headed now more closely reflect the talking heads in our governments than humanity itself. And it is a frightening thing to watch unfold. So much of what I'm seeing in the news sounds like something out of some dark satirical comedy. Americans are refusing to wear masks in public because somehow that's infringing on their rights? We'll get to that in just a second. Rallying together in protest because they can't go any longer without a haircut and demand they be allowed to return to work. And have even gone as far as posting pictures of themselves at restaurants or other public gatherings without masks in defiance as if by doing so they've somehow slain the beasts of the CDC and the governments. As if they're proud of their ignorance, see willful anti-intellectualism as some sign of patriotism and look upon those in academia and all forms of higher learning with disdain. I'm not gonna do what they tell me to do because it's my right to do so. It's kind of childish, isn't it? Didn't Trump himself say that he loves the poorly educated? Hmm. Even when you tell them that their actions could lead to the deaths of elderly and or immunocompromised folk, it's like your words bounce off of them and they dig their heels even deeper into the earth with their nose pointed high in the sky, a la the backfire effect. We've all been in situations where it feels like we can't get through to a family member or friend about their harmful beliefs, and I'm going to share a little secret with you about where this resistance to the truth comes from. Knowledge is at odds with capitalism. If knowledge doesn't lead to a material and or financial financial gain, it's considered useless or a threat. Ask yourself something. What do powerful institutions and people stand to gain from withholding life-saving data from the people who will be hit hardest by the pandemic? More often than not, it boils down to the millennia's old technique of information control that leads to the control of a populace and thus the embracing of anti-intellectualism and distrust of the truth in order to prevent the spark of knowledge from igniting revolt. Very Orwellian if you think about it, even though Orwell was a bit of an anti sim but uh, more on that some other time. In an article for Salon, David Masiatra said, in reference to words spoken by the late Gore Vidal, that an intellectual is someone who can deal with abstractions. This is instructive. Americans either cannot or do not want to deal with abstractions all by design, too. Look at how education is structured in this country. What do our schools tend to pride themselves on as far as the curriculum they present to students? It's horrifying when you step back for the first time and realize our schools have become houses of indoctrination, but but of a completely different breed the conservatives and those in similar ideological positions see them as. All manner of humanities, arts, queer and gender studies, social sciences and feminism, and anything revolving around how to be a functional human being in society who can think critically, form their own opinions, study history and the world for themselves, and never believe something simply because someone told them it was true. All of these have been intentionally eradicated in order to mold young people into subservient peons of the 
the state and capitalism, rather than fully autonomous and self-aware human beings. They feed you their version of the truth, and then you obediently follow their every command in order to bring them riches and power while the shackles remain tied to your ankles. For a prime example of this, look no further than the actions taken by Betsy DeVos, the sister of Blackwater founder Eric Prince, since she was appointed as head of the U.S.'s Department of Education with zero experience. Randy Weingarten, the president of the American Federation of Teachers, said in an article for The Guardian, Here is someone who has done everything in her power to try to make it harder for us to strengthen public sector schools. Despite her willful contempt of the law and long record of fraud and illegal money funneling scandals and gutting of key programs, she's been shielded by the Trump administration because she's a key piece in their attempt to completely dismantle our education system. And the most powerful bludgeoning tool she's used to do so is the weakening of the separation of church and state. And the argument that religious liberty must prevail because, in her own words, the First Amendment doesn't exist to protect us from religion, it exists to protect religion from governments. They're dead set on opening the floodgates for mass discrimination against students who are LGBTQ, neurodivergent, or members of other minorities, as well as dragging the dead carcass of creationism and all manner of religious science back into the classroom, which would no doubt have people like Ken Ham and Kent Hovitz squeeing in joy. The inevitable result is, as Masiatra continues, a graduate who is deeply indebted and carefully trained, but also profoundly ignorant, someone who, confirming Hofstadter's fears, can excel in a complicated profession, but cannot navigate the complexities and contradictions of political debates, social discourse, or cultural change. The knowledge spoken by those in intelligentsia is evil, and those under the spell of the state truly believe they're doing what's right and just, even though their views were the result of unknowingly allowing themselves to become an arm of the state. Propaganda is powerful, y'all. Also, remember what I said earlier about the commodification of knowledge itself? When mostly reputable news sources are locked behind paywalls and conservative sites like Brett Bart or The American Thinker, which don't exactly have the most honorable reputations or even a shred of integrity, are completely free to use, it makes it all but impossible to stem the tide of misinformation and ideological power grabs. Which source do you think readers will go to when they don't want to shill out cash just to read an article. You guessed it correctly. And it just so happens that these right-wing media outlets have directly fueled the rise of the anti-vax movement, anti-Semitic theories like George Soros being some super-powered puppet master who's trying to take over the world, popularized the use of Pepe the Frog as a symbol of white nationalism and anti-Semitism, as well as a vast ocean of other dog whistles. And they're but one part of a vast network utilized by the right-wing to push itself out into the public sphere and grab at vulnerable minds through what ever means necessary. Whether it's the black pits of 4chan, TV pastors, deceptively simple solutions to modern socio-political issues that are tinged with racism and bigotry, and preying on our most primal fears. All with the aim of normalizing things like anti-Semitism, ethnic cleansing and genocide, race realism, the trans agenda, and the erasure of white people and white culture, and inducing passivity into the populace so they defend the state no matter how horrific horrific its actions are. Now, with all of this being said, what exactly does all of this have to do with the conspiracy theories revolving around COVID-19 specifically? To put it as simply as I'm able, it's this. When facts backed by research are seen as worthy of the same consideration as propaganda steeped in fear, hatred of an other, and ignorance, as if there's a debate to be had, it gives the illusion that there's validity and substance to the propagandized information, thus pulling vulnerable minds into the conspiratorial or even alt-right rabbit hole at breakneck speed. Spend five minutes attentively watching Fox News, even though I really wouldn't recommend it. And you'll notice the hosts almost never treat some scientists, or any sort of academic or well-studied person with respect, or even allow them to speak. They're ridiculed, relentlessly attacked, laughed at, and framed as antagonizers pushing some liberal SJW fantasy that will bring destruction to America should it ever be embraced by the whole of society. The knowledgeable ones are the conspiratorial ones, according to their narrative. Not to mention their target audience tends to be the exact segment of society that most often post conspiracy theories and all manner of right-wing propaganda on Facebook, but uh, I'm sure there's no connection there. <laughs> 
Nearly every Fox News host has spent months now lambasting the CDC and Dr. Fauci, the director of the National Institute of Allergy and Infectious Diseases, claiming they're intentionally misleading the public to control them, and that to defy them is to resist tyranny and reveal yourselves as true patriots. Equating being American with being ignorant, so all those who embrace ignorance see everyone else as their enemy and un-American. But just a few minutes of cursory research afterwards will torpedo every single bit of that horse shit and reveal all the ways in which those on the right paint themselves as a voice of reason and voice for the people, even though conservatives couldn't be more out of touch with the struggles of real everyday people who have been directly harmed by their actions. We need to acknowledge the GOP and alt-right's expertise at stoking fears of xenophobia and modern ideas that revealed the multitudes of faults in theirs, tap into our predilection for tribalism, control information flow, and hide actual historical and or scientific facts, erode the institutions of education and science, and do everything in their power to turn their followers against other Americans so as to maintain indoctrination's hold on them, and prevents them from seeing reality for what it actually is. And therein lies the great contradiction. The working class is made up of conservatives, those who've embraced all forms of anti-intellectualism and evangelicals who wield their religion as a weapon against knowledge itself, as well as people like ourselves, the communists and socialists whom the right fears, the LGBTQ community, the religiously unaffiliated, pagans, ethnic minorities, and anyone who falls outside the privileged bubble of those in power. We are all being crushed under the thumb of this government, but millions have successfully been conned into voting against their best interests and believe we're in the middle of a great culture war rather than the very real class struggle that is now reaching new heights of intensity. And it's manifesting in ordinary people fighting back in mass against government mandates for wearing a mask in public because they see it as an attempt to control them and strip them of their voice and freedoms. Vail Wright, Senior Director of Healthcare Innovation at the American Psychological Association, told Yahoo News, you've got this huge sense of dis distrust of the governments, whether it's local or federal, you've got distrust in the science, and then you have this really unfortunate situation where the science changed. Science does that, especially in certain situations that are so novel and uncertain, but that's really confusing for people. Those who already struggle with abstractions, complex thinking, and remain trapped in a binary black and white worldview have routinely attacked not just the effectiveness of wearing masks, but the research around COVID-19 itself, because in their eyes, if the CDC is routinely updating guidelines on containment protocols and their understanding of how COVID spreads, that means either they don't know what they're doing and are not to be trusted, or they're desperately trying to control the public and thus aren't to be trusted. Over the past few months, we've seen anti-mask protesters, I still can't believe that's actually a thing, and churchgoers defiantly gather in close proximity to one another with their faces uncovered to assert their rights to do what they want because any institution that tries to tell them to think of others instead of themselves for once is clearly out to get you. Good old American individualism at work there, huh? And it makes me think of conversations I've had with friends and strangers about this debates, some of them going as far to say things like, well, they should just stay home and take care of their health. If I'm out in public and I don't want to wear a mask, I'm not going to. It's their fault if they get infected anyways. You're the one spraying COVID particles out of every facial orifice. What? The moment I point out that immunocompromised and elderly people have the right to live and refusing to wear a mask around them is putting their lives in grave danger, I'm told that I'm opening the door to an authoritarian takeover of the country, and that once we're all wearing masks, who knows? In a few years time, we could all be wearing burkas with numbers painted on them because we'll have been stripped of all our individuality and identities. So let me get this straight. All we've asked you to do is put a piece of cloth on your face to slow the spread of a a respiratory disease that is highly infectious, that way you're protected from particles spread by others and vice versa, thus taking care of your fellow man. And somehow this is one of the greatest violations of your rights in the history of mankind. It's a mask! Get the fuck over yourself! I hate that you're getting so triggered by the mere thought of doing things for the good of society as a whole, but right now we're all sitting in a boat that is slowly sinking and you're yelling at us for asking why you're scooping water into the boat rather than trying to help us get it safely to shore. Your actions are having life or death 
consequences. And no amount of protesting, fear-mongering, and throwing your middle fingers up to the government is going to change that. We have to be in this together and be willing to make sacrifices whenever desperate times call for it. Otherwise, all you're doing is putting the rest of us in even more danger. The death toll for COVID is going to grow to a level we couldn't possibly imagine now. The economy is going to continue to collapse, and we've yet to feel the full brunt of this pandemic on our social structures, strained as they may already be. These conspiracy theories that are being carelessly spread will only lead to more death if they haven't already, and at some point you are going to have to ask yourself something. What's more important? Your right to spread misinformation? Because doing so makes you feel like you're taking a righteous stand against a tyrannical government therefore it's good no matter the harm it causes, or the right of all peoples to have a say in whether or not they live or die. Think very carefully on that, and maybe do a little self-examination on your own moral compass in the process. Oh, and uh, there's a little snag with the idea that these masks are violating people's constitutional rights. Um... The Constitution supports the mandates being issued by both the government and the CDC! Oops. According to the American Bar Association, under the U.S. Constitution's 10th Amendment and U.S. Supreme Court decisions over nearly 200 years, state governments have the primary authority to control the spread of dangerous diseases within their jurisdiction. The 10th Amendment, which gives states all powers not specifically given to the federal government, allows them the authority to take public health emergency actions such as setting quarantine and business restrictions. Hmm. That's unfortunate. We're in an extreme scenario whenever it comes to the COVID-19 pandemic, and it is understandable that so many millions of people are unsettled and scared of all the precautions that are being taken by state-level legislators to try to get ahead of it. But there is no excuse for turning something that's already been proven to be life-saving into a political wedge issue and bringing harm or even death to hundreds of thousands in the fallout. It's really about depoliticizing masks in general, Wright says, and instead making the messaging about doing this as a way to protect your country to protect you and to protect your community. And that as citizens, that comes with a certain amount of freedoms and price, but it also comes with responsibility. And in this case, that responsibility is to protect public health. Neither party has taken any sort of substantive action towards curbing COVID's spread, so perhaps it now rests upon us, the people, to take whatever action is necessary to do what the state refuses to do or cannot do. Never doubt the power that the people possess when we choose to set aside petty differences and work together towards one common goal. But under no circumstances should we ever give airtime to people like Andy No, who is a fascist and provides kill lists for Adam Waffen, my Hello, Yiannopoulos, Alex Jones, and so on, as well as far-right organizations like QAnon and Red Ice TV. We can debunk their propaganda without allowing their voices to be spread, and we must be aware of the dangers of platforming those who will take any and every opportunity to latch onto whatever minds they can get a hold of. Don't engage with them, and don't let them bait you in trying to debate them. They feed off of attention, and will happily paint us as the aggressors and violent Antifa mob if it means they get more clicks and more incentive to continue spewing bullshit. Deplatforming works because it means those spreading dangerous conspiracy theories will be significantly hindered in their ability to reach the masses and will have the opportunity to raise our voices and speak truth directly to the people. Yeah, there's gonna be some infighting along the way, it happens, but what matters is that we do this as one act of solidarity for one another and become all the stronger for it. The boogeyman that's out to get you is not the CDC, cultural Marxists, the gays, liberals. Well, it depends on what they're doing. <laughs> It's those in power who've allowed the foundations of our society to be eaten away by a love for money, exploitation of the ignorance, and the destruction of every cultural pillar that would allow us to weather any storm and value knowledge, empathy, and community above all else. Perhaps you could direct some of your ire to uh, them, maybe. Stay safe, lovelies. Wear your damn mask and make sure that whatever it is you decide to do, you consider first the consequences it could have on those around you and whether or not what you're doing is for the betterment of yourself at the expense of others, or something that would be beneficial to every one of us. Because, uh, the party of personal responsibility certainly isn't going to. Fight misinformation wherever it arises, strive to only speak truth and goodness, and no matter 
What? Don't let the bastards get you down.